Hello all my fellow nerds out there, it's Oracle Nerd Ridge and welcome back to our Wonderland. Oh my god, you guys, this is this has been a crazy day for me. So I just saw Ruby Volume 9, the latest episode, and I was squealing. And now Carrie Patch had the audacity to drop this today. Oh my god, I am excited. If you guys couldn't tell, I am excited. So you know what? We're gonna be jumping into this straight away because i really want to go over this i really i really cannot wait to record on monday so i'm going to record this right now and i'm thinking i'm going to make it a premiere on monday so we're just going to dive right in let's go ahead and load back up to where we left off arc five. Oh my god i have been waiting so long for this oh oh whoa 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 it's glitching I love glitchy effects. It, it just has, glitchy effects just has that sense of time to it, you know. Oh. Once upon a time, there was a tree. A tree that could grant wishes. People would come to the tree and ask for their heart's desires. The wishes nourish the tree. And the tree would grant them. For the tree loved them. The tree loved everyone. And they shaped the, the tree's world. But people began to take the wishes for granted. They grew jealous and bitter. And began, began asking for more and more things. Oh. Oh wait, whoops, I pressed escape. <laughs> For horrible things. No longer did their wishes nourish the tree. They hurt and twisted the tree, distorting the world it had created. Heartbroken, the tree casts everyone away, vowing that it would never trust anyone again. However, the tree grew lonely. It missed caring for people. It missed the joy of laughter. It missed the taste of their wishes. I will only allow those with pure and innocent hearts to enter my world, the tree thought to itself. And so it waited, and waited, and waited, until one day, it found them. Oh, that, that's Iggy and the others! The tree was happy again. So happy. It knew children fed it the most delicious wishes, innocent and pure. They reshaped the tree's world and helped it grow strong again. Turned it back to, into a land of joy and hope. The tree cared for them, watched them grow, tried to make them happy trusted them but children grow up and one by one and they're all disappearing they lost their innocence The tree fell into despair, casting them out before they could corrupt it, its world once more. It felt betrayed. Betrayed by its children. Betrayed by everyone. It sealed itself away. Bitter. Desolate. Hungry. For hundreds and hundreds of years, its, appetites, its appetite grew. One wish. That was all it needed. That was all it craved. One single wish to make it all whole again. The purest, most innocent wish of all.
Wait, so was that the tree that Iggy and the others went to before? Everything is a blur. Whoa, okay, we're back with negative colors now. A nauseating whirlpool of kaleidoscope copper colors dancing across my eyes at all times. One second I'm relishing in the strange veil of nostalgia, of long-lost memories of intimacy, of glittering pinpricks of happiness when my heart had felt truly content. Then everything washed away in a del deluge of mind-numbing angst and pain. So much pain. It comes and goes in and we waves as, in as my mind re remembers it replays it. All those moments of fear, of panic. Those final seconds before my eyes had closed in death. Sometimes craving it. Craving an escape from the pain. Running up and down my arms and legs, choking my lungs. I can't get away from it. Curled up on the couch, face showed in my pillow, willing everything to go, everything away. I can't eat. I can barely even move. It takes everything I can just dragging myself back to the bathroom to dry heave when a par particularly intense wave of nausea passes through me. My body shakes as, as though feverish. <clears throat> my skin burns with it. Sometimes cold, sometimes hot. But always prickling like a, with knife-like snips and snaps as I struggle to claim my rampant thoughts. How many times had I died? I have no idea. Every time I close my eyes, I'm given another glimpse, another flash. Bloody spears shoved through my gut. Scissors snip, snipping through my skin. Oh no, he remembers his deaths. Every time he died. Oh shit. Did, did us getting him killed... Does getting him killed more and more add to that list? Knives chopping through bone. Red, so much red. The red of my insides, slipping and slopping as they slide out of me, around me. The smell of my of myself cooking. No matter how hard I press my face into the pillow, the images don't stop. The smells, the sounds, the coiling tendrils of panic. I stay there all day, just lying there, shivering, sometimes crying, sometimes gasping, sometimes drifting in and out of surreal. Dream laden sleep. <clears throat> I only vaguely notice the sun rising and falling. The orange red tints coating the wall once it makes its way towards the horizon. Did someone call me? I don't remember. The phone might have rung, but maybe that was a memory too. A lilting me melody plaguing my dreams. The sun has just, just about set all the way by the time I managed to quell my nausea. Sit up and stare at a far wall dark in my dancing shadows. <clears throat> Clumsily, I shove my glasses under my nose. Thirsty. I need to drink something. Get some fluids into me or, or something. God. I stumble into the kitchen and pour in the dark and pour myself some water. It tastes like gunk. What time is it even? I glance around for my phone, realize I left it back in the bedroom. <clears throat> I finally turn on the lights as I retrieve it. I step slow and sluggish across the carpet. 7.31. So late already. I, I have a few missed calls too. Guess those were real after all. One from Hunar. Yes, Hunar. I know. Bucks is gone. You know what else is gone? My fucking leg. Yep, she chopped it right off. Strong. Strong swing on that one. Real slugger. Sorry if I'm not in the mood to talk about it right now. Now Bucks is plaguing my thoughts. The squelch were axe as it cracked open Genzo's head. The way her arms trembled as she squeezed Orland's neck so tight his eyes had begun popping out. The blood staining in her hands after she smashed Gidget's face into vertible, vertible mush. <clears throat> I bring my hand to my forehead. Feeling a cold sweat forming across my hairline. Then I turn my attention to ba back to the overly bright screen of my phone. Hunar's call isn't the only one listed. There's also one from Genzo only a few hours ago. <clears throat> no message, though. 
Kenzo had never called me before. Well, I mean, he certainly called me before. Just, like, not in this weird... Whatever this is. Series of events? Unending loop of death? Eternal hellscape? <clears throat> I paused for a moment, just staring at his name. Could it be that he remembers too? There's something simultaneously comforting and terrifying at this thought. I do my best to fight down the ri rising whirly gigs of discomfort in my belly as I crunch back to the couch. My thumb only hovers about 10 seconds before I ma manage to match it against the call button. One ring. Two. Between each ring, my mind jumps to his face. His face as I kissed him. Punched him. Killed him. Fuck, 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 fuck. I start panicking and nearly drop the phone. <clears throat> but it doesn't matter because he doesn't answer anyway. As I switch this over to voicemail and let my hand fall in my lap. If he really does remember, if he really does remember, I rub my face hard. I don't know how I feel about him, about any of this. I'm having a whole fuck ton of complicated feelings right now. This lack of an answer is somewhat concerning though. You don't think he's having a, as rough of a time as I am, do you? Wait, is he asking me directly? <laughs> Genzo, struggling with emotions, as if. And yet, my gaze returns to my phone. Then I'm calling him again. This time, when he doesn't answer, I leave a vague, awkward message while checking in on him. Only after I've hung up for the second time, sitting there with my thumbs tapping the glossy screen, do I feel the loneliness start to settle in. No, not loneliness. More like, a. Uh, uh, Visceral need to hear someone's voice. Exas ex exacerb exacerbated by, by a, a deafening quiet on the receiver. <clears throat> maybe. Maybe I should just go see him. The more this thought plays in my mind, the stronger it becomes, morphing it into an itch like urge that just won't go away. I don't want to be alone right now. I can't be alone right now. Even if he remembers too, even if, even if that means facing everything we've been through, the things we've done and said, <clears throat> well, it'd be better than sitting here curled up into myself and wanting to cry. Maybe we could even figure out where to go from here, if there even is somewhere to go from here. <clears throat> I try not to think about it, <clears throat> one step at a time. The first step is is getting get, getting to Genzo's. Keeping this goal raised a focus in my mind, I force myself to my feet and back into my room to ch to get changed. Keep it together, Reggie. Keep it together. Oh, my my boy taking the initiative. Let's go. <coughs> Genzo. Oh, I, I forgot my voices for each of the characters, so it's been so long! Genzo? My knock, was, my knock sounds uncomfortably loud in the empty hallway. As I'm standing there, shifting awkwardly from left foot to right, I overcome with a strange, strange sense of deja vu. No, not strange. I know why. I know exactly why. <clears throat> Which is little to quell my anxiety. <clears throat> I shake my head to clear my thoughts. No point in dwelling on the possibly hundreds of times I've done the same thing over and over again. I'm about to lose my mind as is. I return my attention to the door, which has thus far remained silent and still. Surely he's not out. Surely. I knock again, this time a bit louder. Genzo, it's Iggy. The guy you've been in love with since high school. Uh, you guys, you guys remember? You guys remember that? Uh, remember because like we kind of went through Genzo's memories during like I think it was arc two. I want to say oh, it's been way too long, dude. <clears throat> I grimace at this, wave at a guilt washing through me. It seems so obvious now, all of it. How had I not been able to see it before? But all this time, or perhaps I hadn't allowed myself to see it. I sigh and run a hair through my head, a hand through my hair. <laughs> 
So many, of th so many of the things I'd said to him over the years, I feel so cruel now. So many things I, I swallow, shake my head. This isn't the time for wallowing in self-depression. Genzo still hasn't answered the door, and it's making my stomach clench in, in increasingly tired knots. Genzo, for fuck's sake! This time my knocks are sharp and purposeful with a tinge of impatience. <clears throat> then I remember. I freeze for a moment, knuckles still poised just shy of the wood. I unscramble the ring for the ring and my keys in my pocket. That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right! We traded spares years ago! There's no, there's no one I trust more with the key than my inner sanctum. To my inner sanctum. The memory sends another needle-like jab of guilt in my heart. But I focus on the positive, the key. It's there, hanging between the folk spare, my folk spare and my mailbox key. <clears throat> Quiet and, unassum and unassuming, having never used it. I shove it promptly into the lock, push it open the door. Genzo? I say almost... As an afterthought as I walk inside. It's dark. Of course it's dark. This means nothing. Oh. Whoa. Wait, is this Genzo's place? Dude, my boy is living the life. <clears throat> so I flick on the lights and look around. It's a strange feeling seeing this place. It's not the first time I've been here. I helped him move away, move way back in the day. I visited once or twice after moving back from college. When I'd still feel guilty about not staying in contact much during school. But that had been years ago. And looking around this place now feels somehow surreal. Juxtaposed with... Surreal juxtaposed with the cocktail of emotion, tr emotional trauma currently curdling in my brain. It's neat and clean and sparse. Not a single item out of place or left astray. Just as it always had been. Though perhaps exuding a sor sort of quiet loneliness is to it that hadn't been there before. Genzo? I try again, though my voice is less confident this time, unsure. He's not in the main living area, nor the kitchen. And when I don't see him in the bedroom either, I really do start to think he's absent entirely. I probably head into the bathroom, take a look around, turn to leave, then stop. The shower curtain is half pulled back, revealing a spot of green in the tub. It takes me, it takes me to realize it's not an abandoned towel. Genzo? I stumble forward, knees drop into the tile. My boy! Oh my god, my boy! Oh my gosh! Oh, I missed him. Oh my god, look at my boy. Yeah. He's there, like a little ball rolled up in the tub, arms hugging his belly, eyes barely cracked. Genzo? My voice hitches. I give his shoulder a hairy shake. He recoils at the touch, tries to turn away. Genzo, what's wrong? Another shake. It's then that I notice him shaking. His whole body is trembling with it. Fuck. Genzo, it's okay. I'm here. I'm here, okay? I try tugging on his shoulder, getting him to turn towards me. He just shoves me away. Genzo, you can't... Can't what? Can't freak out? Why? Because I need him. The dependable one. That always knows what to do next. My shoulders sag. A long, slow sigh pushing past my lips. Let's, let's get you out of the tub, yeah? I reach again, gentle this time. But he just shoves my hand away, curling on him, in on himself even tighter. Genzo, come on! My voice my voice comes out sharper than I meant to. And I see Genzo wince. His fingers clenched too tightly to the fabric of his sweatshirt that his knuckles had gone white. Tears pool in, the, in his eyes before giving with a shudder and dribbling down his face. Fuck, 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 fuck. But I need to get him out of the damn tub! So I rise to my feet, grab a giant fistful in his sweatshirt, and... Yank. My boy! Genzo's body slumps backwards like a saggy rag doll. His face is streaked with what looks like multiple layers of tears. His eyes are red and puffy, glazing off on focus towards the far wall. Fuck, Gen. I bite down on my, 
my lips so my bottom lips so hard I can taste blood. Hug him, slap him. Why would I slap him? Why would I slap my boy? No, no, I'm hu I'm hugging him. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to fucking do. But my mind flicks back to the hugs Genzo gave me over the years. Those times when I'd been, when I'd been the one unable to function or think, or or those times when, when all I wanted was to someone to hold me and tell me everything was gonna be okay. So I wrap my arms around his neck. I pull him close. <coughs> it's me, Iggy. I'm it's it's Iggy. I'm here. I'm here. I push my my fingers into his sweatshirt, pressing my nose and nose and face into his hair, and the, the curls tickling my cheeks. They just hold him. Hold him so fucking tight. This must be this must finally trigger something because he returns a hug with, with a vengeance. I'm nearly squeezing the air on my lungs as he buries his face on my shoulders. Then the, then the sobs begin anew, his shoulders shuddering, throat hiccuping. <clears throat> I run my hand gently up and down his back in, in time with his trembling breaths. He smells warm. A comforting mixture of corn chips, fabric softener, and cigarette smoke. And his stubble prickles against my neck. I sigh against the side of his head. It's gonna be okay, kid. It's gonna be okay. My boys! Oh, I'm so worried about my boys. Five minutes later, I finally managed to free him from the confines of the tub. My boy! His form now slumped like an oversized sack of potatoes on the couch. I grab the blanket folded up nearby, on the nearby chair and wrap it around his shoulders. Hoping it might provide some level of comfort as I scrounge, scrounge around for food. <clears throat> then it's to the kitchen, where I can only hope he has something edible. And preferably something appropriate for an emotionally comp compromised individual. Middle we'll two, if such food even exists. After perusing the cartons of leftovers in the fridge and the array of frozen pizzas in the freezer, I move to the pantry, where I catch a slight sight of a can of chicken and dumpling soup. Comfort food it is, then. <coughs> Eat. The soup is adequately warm. I place a bowl in Genzo's lap. He doesn't move. Genzo, you need to eat something. I see his shoulders slump, his gaze turning vaguely towards the bowl sitting on his legs. What's wrong with my boy? But still, he makes no move to touch it. Just forget it then. Feed him if you have to. <coughs> um, I don't know. Can I save here? Yes, I can. Um, let's just forget it then. I bring my hand to my forehead, fingers forging the divots in my skin. This isn't getting me anywhere, clearly. So what's the point in pushing? In pushing? If he wants to wallow away in misery, who am I to get in his way? Fine. I grumble, reaching forward to grab the bowl. Don't eat it then. I place it on the coffee table, pausing for a moment and watch him s watch the steam marble in the air. I wish I had someone to tell me what to do. How to- Wait, Genzo's looking at me now. To fix this. I can ba barely take care of myself these days, let alone someone else. I also glance at Genzo, who seems to look even more despondent. If, that, if it's at all possible. God damn it. I bring a hand up to towards his shoulder. My fingers hovering up just above the fabric of his sweatshirt, but then ultimately lower it. Why don't we, uh, get you in bed, yeah? Some rest will help. <coughs> mm. Things will seem better in the morning. Mm. Despite his mumbled murmurs of affirmation, it's clear he doesn't believe me. To be honest, I'm not sure, I'm not sure I even believe myself. Getting him from the couch to the bed proves easier than I expect. It's only it takes a slight prodding to get him to his feet and a light tug of his sleeves again to follow. <clears throat> He's like a dog at my heels, stopping when I stop, moving when I move. I hook my index finger in his and guide him towards the bed. Get some rest, yeah? 
A grunt of affirmation as he sinks into the mattress. I watch for him for a moment, just lying there, co covers to his chin. I shudder to think if, he Im if the image is plaguing his thoughts. Worse even than mine, no doubt. Thinking about it summons a wave of nausea in my belly, so I try to push it from my mind. I'll, uh, I'll be in the other room in case you need anything. I scratch my head, then my calf, then finally turn away. I pause for a moment at the door, wondering whether or not I should shut it, but ultimately leave it open. It's not like the light will bother him, and he might he might need me for something in, in the night. <clears throat> I wander back to the living area, not quite sure what to do. The bowl, the bowl of uneaten soup is still sitting on the coffee table. Not wanting to let it go to waste, I slurp away at it for a while until the remaining dregs at the bottom start to get cold and unappetizing. Then I heard. To, then I head to the kitchen to clean the things up. I'm not sure how late it is by this point. Time seems strange, inconsequential somehow. I do, however, feel tired. My emotions have been a number on me today, leaving me more than a little sap. <clears throat> so I curl up on the couch, using the using the blanket again so I left behind as a cocoon. I'll just rest a bit, maybe. A little nap. Then I'll check on Genzo. Yeah, that's what I'll do. My eyes start, are starting to droop. The two heavy weights I no longer have the strength to lift. I need to make sure he has everything he needs. I drift off before I even realized my sore punct snore is punctuating the empty room. <coughs> Oh, I'm, I feel so bad about my boy. I drift in and out of Russ's sleep most of the night. When I wake up, up, it's a little after eight. My legs are cramped and stiff, and there's a nice patch of drool on the couch cushions. At some point, I must have taken my glasses off because I find them tossed at the carpet a few feet away. God, I'm such a mess. It takes me a few moments. A few moments of blurry confusion before my mind sharpens into semi-morose clarity. Oh, right, I'm at Genzo's. <clears throat> On his couch, to be more precise. What a night. I rub my palms against my eyes with a half-uttered groan and push myself to my feet. Coffee will do me some good. It only takes five minutes battling with Genzo's coffee maker before the reassuring sound of per Percol percolations hits my ears. It's a comforting hum. Normal and real and tangible in the midst of of whatever the hell is going on. Watching the, sl the slowly dripping liquid fall into the pot is almost enough to hypnotize me to a sort of slice of life comp compl complacency. Almost. Then I'm, as I'm searching the cupboards for mugs, the sound of footsteps stills my head. Eggs? I look back. My boy! Genzo is in the d doors of the kitchen. Gaze pointed vaguely in my direction. Yeah, it's me. A pause. I turn away from the cupboards. You were a little, uh... I wave my hand to my, my hand as though it somehow put words in my mouth. It, But it doesn't. And my voice trails off as expected. <clears throat> Genzo just grunts. He runs a thumb along his brow with a furrowed wince. Remembered you, b remembered you, but wasn't sure if it was some kind of fever dream. My mind hacked, uh, fever dream my mind hacked up. <coughs> a cough. Guess not though. Nope, it's uh, me in the flesh, or at least last time I checked. I cringe and tug at my collar, feeling more awkward by the second. You uh, want some coffee? As if to, as if in direct response, the coffee maker gurgles. Sure, that'd be great. Thanks. A pause. Guess so. Maybe uh, go shower. Sure thing. But he doesn't move. He just stands there, gaze pointed downwards as he scratches at the back of his head. He opens his mouth, closes it, opens it again, and simply turns around with a grunt disappearing back to the apartment. 
my shoulders released ten the tension I had I hadn't even known they were sequestering. <coughs> Once the coffee's ready, I bring two mugs of it back to the living living area, seating myself with a slump down slumped down on the couch cushions. Gizzard returns about ten minutes later, looking considerably more alive and donning the new and donning his usual cap. Your coffee's on the table. Oh, uh, right. Thanks. He sits on the opposite end of the couch, reaches for the mug, fingers see seeking out of, out of the porcelain surface before curling around the handle with a with a tug. He brings it to his lips once, twice. Thanks, he says again, either because he'd forgotten or simply wanted to emphasize his gratitude further. <clears throat> and then we'd sit there, both of us drinking our coffee, silent aside from the occasional sniff and intermediate slurp. I turn my gaze again, Zell, wanting to say something, needing to say something. But every time, the words get themselves caught in the back of my throat, almost like a fleshy pink fly trap that has parked itself into my larynx. Genzo was the first to finally speak, the, sudden, the suddenness of it making my hand, hands jump. I'm, uh, gonna assume that you, too, uh... A blink shifts my legs. He hasn't finished, but I don't expect him to. Yeah, I simply say. He winces. Pretty crazy. Yeah. No, not that it, you know, doesn't make sense somehow. With what with, with all the fucking deja vu shit going on, you know? But also, like, holy fuck. How many times have we... Have we... Yeah. Will you say something more than yeah? I, I jump in my seat and spill my coffee into my hands. S sorry, I just... Genzo rubs his eyes and sighs. No, it's fine. Sorry. I set my mug on my lap. My fingers are shaking. Do you... Want to talk about it? To be honest, no fucking way in hell. The only reason I'm not quivering pot... A quivering pile of unintelligible goo right now is because I meant I managed to temporarily shove all those fucked up shit what I went through d down in the recesses of my shit shoot. Like my my god, that 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 is kind of a okay. I will admit that is kind of a funny way to interpret that, but my god, so so Gen so Genzo remembers everything too. This is this is gonna be a long day, isn't it? That's a problem for sure. That's a problem for future Genzo to sort out. If future Genzo's therapist, if future Genzo even makes it out of whatever insane bedtime story from hell, this is this is we've got going on here. Yeah. <clears throat> Genzo brings a hand to his mouth, fingers forging divots in his cheeks, as as he gazes off towards the wall. I assume the others. Fuck the others, he says with says with a snap, a fiery anger that jostles the cup of coffee in his cup. Fuck them, fuck them, fuck them. He clenches his eyes shut, pressing his knuckles against his lips. <clears throat> and I say nothing, I just sit there watching him. Finally, sorry, I didn't mean that. It's okay. I just, his knuckles go, are as tight as his teeth now, and I worry he'll break the skin. But he eventually eases off, traces of tears in corners of his eyes. I feel like I need time, but there isn't enough time. There will never be enough time to... to. He rubs his face first up and down, takes a sip of his coffee. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to fucking do. And for the first time in my life, I can't even fake it. I stare at him, wanting for him to continue. Perhaps he, Perhaps he doesn't. Okay, wait, can I actually turn up the, uh... No, oh, sound volume is all the way up. I'm just gonna turn up the music a wee bit. <clears throat> I turn my gaze back to my coffee, watching the rising steam marble in the air. We need to go back. I say without really thinking. A matter-of-fact statement. The one thing amongst all the questions we have about what's going on, about the horrors we experience, uh, about us. 
the two of us and what happened between us and what and what we even fuck, and what we even fucking are and where we even want to want to fucking go from here and where we should go from here and the one thing we can be sure of i trace my thumbs around the rim of my mug something changed something's different something broke i don't know i don't have any idea of what's going on or why or or anything but there must be a reason, right? A pause. And I just, I think this might be your only chance to fix it. Another pause. <clears throat> if there even is a way to fix this. Yeah. Genzo finally says, th though his tone is begrudging. Because he knows. He, I know he knows. He, and he knows that I know that he knows. A shared acceptance that something is calling us there. And that something will keep calling us there. Whether we remember the loops or not, things aren't gonna just stop. Not before we fix what we started. Genzo's hand is resting on the couch cushion next to him. Do nothing, give a reassuring squeeze. C come on, I, I have to reassure my boy. I'm not sure if it's the anxiety plaguing my stomach. The feeling that I need to reassure him, <clears throat> or, or perhaps something else that I'm not quite ready to admit yet. But I find myself reaching out, hesitant to enclose his knuckles with my palm. I give his hand the slightest of squeezes, his fingers soft between mine. He gives a small start, then turns his gaze in my direction. Eyes go wide at first before softening. He lip his lips press into a tiny smile as he clenches my thumb tight against my fingers. We try calling Gidget and Orlan later. It's not entirely sure why, as we both know it'll be no use. Sure, things may be a bit clearer now, but that doesn't mean things have changed completely. We all still have our paths, if that's the right way to put it. <clears throat> I suspect that neither of them pick up. They're already gone. After that, there's nothing to do but wait. We obviously can't go until night nightfall. That's just how it works, or something. So I run back home to shower and put on a fresh shirt. Gotta look my best for a trip down the tree after all. And as I'm headed out, I catch a glimpse of my messenger bag hanging off the back of the kitchen chair. Had it. Always been there? I stop, stare at it for a moment. I walk towards it, telling myself, telling myself the shudder running up my back of my neck is simply post-shower chills. Just as I reach my hand out, however, my phone rings. I'm about to leap out of my skin. I grumble and shake my head and yank the phone from my pocket, assuming it's Genzo telling me to hurry my ass up or something, but it's... I stop. Dead where I stand. Not moving a muscle. Not even breathing. The name of the caller ID says... Bucks. Oh shit, Bucks is calling us. I swallow hard and my mouth suddenly extremely dry. Then hand trembling, I bring the phone to my ear. Bucks? My voice doesn't even sound like my own. My own. It's all scratchy and hoarse, squeaks and jumps. There's no response on the other end. I furrow my brows, keen in my ears. No, there is something. Something far off. It's the... It's the as though we're crossing mighty chasm on the other side of the world. A baby crying. Oh no! Oh no, oh no, 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 I think I know where this is going. I know where this is going. Bucks? I try again. The crying's getting louder. That's Bucks' kid! That's her kid! Lonely and screeching. Why isn't someone tending to it? It's so alone. Even louder now. The sound of it fills me with a guttural sense of desolation, of heartache, of bone-aching sadness. Don't cry. Please don't cry. I can fix this. I can make you happy. So please don't- Whoa! The speaker blazer is suddenly unearthly bellow. Monsters and cackling and deafening there, and there, right there inside of me for a second. And 
fuck if I don't literally toss my phone across the room with a gasp, my hand in my collar and my heart beating clean out of my chest. I stand there. Just stand there and stare at it. Innocent and innocuous. Just sitting there on the carpet. I take my hands away from my throat, not even having realized I'd thrown them there. I swallow. I swallow again. And then walk towards it. I lift it gingerly between my middle finger and thumb, almost as though p- picking up a, t- a testy crab. Bring it to my ear. Nothing. The line has gone dead. No more crying. No more horrific howl from the depths of hell. I sigh and rub my rub at my face. I need to get back to Genzo. All of a sudden, being alone feels intolerable. I need someone's presence to keep me from slip sliding straight into the abject, abject despondency. I shove my phone in my pocket and start to leave. Then spot my messenger bag still hanging off of the back of the kitchen chair. I grab it without thinking and toss in the strap over my shoulder as I shove open the door. Genzo is smoking on the couch upon my return. He barely looks up at the sound of my entrance, just gazing off at the far wall as he tap, tap, taps a cigarette between his fingers. Bits of ash decorate the coffee table beneath, beneath a trembling hand. I see three, four, five discarded butts in a small pile next to the still full glass of water and I left him, him with. <clears throat> <clears throat> I step towards the couch, stand there, shift back and forth, heel toe, heel toe. You, uh, okay? I finally ask, wincing at the sound of my own voice. Genzo just grunts. He brings a cigarette to his lips, takes a long drag. I watch the smoke twist and curl its way up to the ceiling, wondering if I should say something about the ceiling turning yellow, then decide against it. Instead, I let my gaze fall back to the cigarette. <clears throat> He's bouncing between his teeth now, up and down. The sight sends snapshots of memories through my mind. The two of us sitting on the bike rack, c- cigarette smoke marbling against the night sky, the smell of the alcohol in his breath. The two of us on the bench outside grub, Grub's pub, and and chill, the chill of the wood beneath my seat, the damp wetness of his of his shoulder from where I, my tears had stained his jacket. Just being with that person would be enough. Fuck, 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 fuck. I snap the heel heel of my hand against my forehead in a series of incessant thwaps. Which perhaps roused Skenzo because he snuffs his cigarette out of, out of the table and stands up with a clap of his thighs. You ready to go? He smiles. His smile appears overly wide. Yeah. He wanders towards the door, feeling for for the cane hanging from the peg to to its right. Then stands there, twisting his hands back and forth on the tip. I walk towards him, blinking, shift my feet. Why? His hands st- stop. Fingers instead latching tight on onto the grip. <coughs> mm. I tell my head to the side, waiting. I, I just wanted to, to ask, before we start this all over again. My shoulders go in, instantly tense, and my heart starts to thud, thud, thudding so loudly, I swear he has to be able to hear it. Everything was real, right? Like, there's not some, like, fake memories hanging out in there, are there? I don't, uh, think so. I guess I can't say for absolute sure, though. A pause. Why? Mm. The same half a mole of uncertainty. I swallow hard, all of a sudden really wishing I could disappear inside of my shoes. He closes his eyes and opens them. Eggs, I a witness. And he seems to set his jaw. I just want you to know that no matter what happens, I... He reaches forward to take my shoulder. Only for his finger to grab the strap of my messenger bag instead, and he immediately stops. I see him blink. <coughs> What's this? Now it's my turn to blink. I completely forgot about the bag. Oh, uh, just... I put this bag between my hands as Genzo fin- finger follows strapped down to, my- to the flat, feeling it out. Just what? Why had I brought it? I open the bag and start fishing insi- about inside. Is there something? That's when I feel it. A small, soft... It's hair curling around my fingers. I pull it out. A doll! 
The bun and I stare up at me. Its torn body sits limply in my palm. What is it? I find my voice caught in my throat for a moment, unable to breathe. Please kill me, Iggy. A cold shiver, shiver of dread twists and coils up in the base of my spine. A, a doll? A doll? I hand it to Genzo, unable to, en to endure it touching my skin any longer. I then watch him feel it out with his thumbs. Didn't know you were the time to play with dolls, eggs. He cracks a smile. It's not mine. Yeah, yeah, that's what they all say. I swear, it, it's not. I have no idea how it got there. In fact, it looks a lot like... There's a knock at the door. It's not even that loud. But the fact that it's right next to us, the right moment... Right at that moment where our nerves and are doing the... Doing who the fuck knows what... It makes both of us jerk backwards like we're, we've been electrocuted. Electrocuted. Fuck. Cold sweat is already breaking out along the back of my neck. Flashes of light and pain and panic shooting through my skull. Were you expecting someone? I hate count. Throat tight and trying to sound normal. The fucking Grim Reaper here is here to end this series of unfortunate events, maybe? How the fuck am I supposed to know? He has a shuffle towards the door, feels the knob, pulls it open. It's. Hooner! My boy! But, well, my other boy! Hooner jolts backwards, all of a sudden movement. His soft brown eyes meet mine, widening momentarily as they take us in. He still got his hand raised, poised to knock again, but he quickly drops it, clasping, clasping his hands nervously instead. Oh, you're both here. Hooner? Genzo cocks his head to the side. Hooner wins is looking ve very much like a scared puppy as he glances back and forth between us. <clears throat> I've been calling and calling, but nobody's picked up. Shit. Shit, that's right. I hadn't answered. I'm pretty goddamn sure Genzo hadn't answered. And if the other two had experienced anything like at all like the two of us had, they most likely hadn't answered either. So Hooner had meant nothing but voicemail. Not a single one of us hit, one of his friends had picked up. Shane washes through me like a foamy soda pop, soda pop straight up my nose. He looks so worried. Sorry, we, uh, I look from Hooner to Genzo and back again. We what? I shake my head. Y you want to come in? Hooner steps inside with a little dip of his head, glancing around the room. Hooner is having more of a presence in the story. I like it. He looks the slightest noise with scent. Then cowering him cowering in the corner. I turn my gaze to, back to Genzo, then the doll in his hands. As if almost sensing my eyes, he seems to realize he's still holding it. <laughs> he stands up. He stands up ram ramrod straight, shoving it behind his back. I don't know why, but Hooner starts talking, voice low. I almost feel like you already know. Genzo takes one step towards me, too. That's weird, right? Like, how could you know? A self a self deprecating laugh. I, I can't sleep, can he? I, I can't even cry anymore. It's like, like I'm in some kind of horrible nightmare I can't wake up from. Gizzo dives towards me in an attempt to return the doll to my bag. Between my surprised jolt and his hairy prods, however, he missed the bag entirely and shoved the doll down the back of my pants instead. Hooner chooses the moment to turn around. He blinks, gaze fa flicking between me and Genzo's, and Genzo's fingers still clenching the hem of my pants. I tense. Your Hooner's brow furrows. My brows twist. Going after her, aren't you? He takes a step to towards us, eyes quivering. My, shutters, my shoulders sink at, at the release of, of built-up tension, and Genzo pulls away. Neither one of us says anything. I don't know what's going on, but I just... I want her back. Hooner curls his arms around his chest, <laughs> fingers digging into the skin. I, it, it's all my fault. Now he's shaking. <laughs> Will you t tell her I'm sorry? It's not your fault, Hooner. 
I finally say, voice catching my throat. <coughs> it is! The sudden sharpness of his tone catches me off guard, and I feel my heart give a jump. It is, he says again. You don't understand, Iggy. She, she could have been someone great if it weren't for me. I've done nothing but hold her back. Now I'm not sure what to say, so I stand silent. <coughs> Even Genzo doesn't have any kind of quippy response. She was my best friend. I... How did it all come to this? I... I just don't understand. He brings his hands to his face, arms trembling. I feel like I need to do something, so I take a step towards him, bring a hand to his shoulder. Lunar, it's... It's not... I pull my hand away, then place it back. I don't know what to do with it. It's really not your fault. None of this is. It just... It happens. I should have been more adamant. He grabs the front of my shirt with an abrupt jerk. She was always forgetting to take them, you know? And I knew she hadn't. But she was so excited. We both were. All hyped up for after the campus tour. And hear, her hearing back from the club without playing for them. Everything just seemed a little... Um, they like it was like it was seemed like it was falling into place and and my oh my boy as he trails off he lets himself slump, slump forward against my chest I feel myself becoming more and more uncomfortable by the second I throw a completely pointless glance at Genzo then bring an awkward arm around her shoulders so just tell her I'm sorry a sniff tell her. I want her to come home. Another sniff. <laughs> that will figure things out. Work through this. I break down on my tongue with heart heavy. We will. Iggy! Genzo hisses. I see him cock his head in disapproval. What? There's no point hiding it. I throw my arms with an outer shrug. I guess. Luna finally pulls away, wiping, wiping his nose on the back of his arm. Thanks. He looks up. Down. I see his brother's photo then pop up. He begins pulling at his collar. There's a flash of silver as he pull, pulls something off from around his neck. T take this. I hold out my hand and he places a small le leather corded necklace in my, in my palm. A single single pewter charm hangs to the end. With two axes across, across the front of, e of each other. I'd be lying if I said my heart didn't skip a beat. What's this? Uh, our good luck charms. She has mine. A pause. If she even still wears it. I twist the dull silver between my fingers, take, taking its design. Why axis, though? Oh! Luna <laughs> laughs and brings a hand to his head with a sheepish grin. That's mostly an inside joke from our D&D &D days. She, she was always the berserker in the group. <laughs> Oh, D and D days. Gee, I wonder. <laughs> Quite the handful too. You you don't know how many of how many of my carefully laid plots plot lines she completely obliterated. You guys play D and D? I blink. Yeah, he rubs his, his neck, gaze falling. We used to do a lot of things. I'm starting to realize how little I actually know about the two of them. They always felt a bit removed from the group somehow, doing their own thing. <coughs> but not exactly unexpected. Kind of hard to have romantic moments with the four of us losers weirding up the vibe. A anyway, it's probably stupid, but maybe it'll help somehow. I close my hand around the metal. They, they were our promises to each other, that no matter what, we'd keep fighting for our dreams. I squeeze it into my palms, ties the bridges cut in my skin. Once Hooner leaves, we start our trek. All right, um, this is gonna be weirdly abrupt, but I'm, but um, I think I am going to leave this episode here for now, guys. So, anyways, thank you so much for watching this episode. Uh, be sure to leave a like. Comment what you think, share this video with your friends, and be sure to subscribe to subscribe and click the bell so you miss a single notification. I'll see all of you in the next video. Goodbye. You say you wanna try, but
what you never do Sugar, there's a reason 